Dear Patriots, before the news starts, please, subscribe to our patriotic channel by clicking the subscribe button. Give us a thumbs up to this video. Don't forget to leave your opinion below in the comments section. Share the news on Facebook and Twitter so you friends see it. Thank you. Judge Janine just said why it's dangerous to be a Trump supporter right now. It is sad how little help Republican President Donald Trump has been getting from members of his own political party, as well as from some so-called conservatives in the media. It is frankly bizarre the way that this group of Republicans has been blocking Trump from carrying out his conservative agenda for America. Worse yet, of course, is the treatment that President Trump has gotten from liberals. Disturbingly, this same treatment from the left has also spread to attacks on Trump's many supporters among regular Americans. In a recent opening statement to her Fox News show, former District Judge Jeanine Pirro discussed why these are now very dangerous times to be a Trump backer. Described Pirro, using Antifa violence in California and the shootings of Republican congressmen as examples, it's unlike anything I've seen in my lifetime. Janine went on. With conviction and an air of condescension, the left so hates Donald Trump and those who support him that they sanction the use of violence against them. They are attempting to recast our legal system without authority to do so, without legislative sanction and without judicial intervention. To them, the use of physical and justified if they disagree with your politics. She added, the very ones who call you call you fascist, and label themselves anti-fascist, or antifa are changing the rules, propagating a legal theory that is not only outrageously incorrect and affront to democracy, it's an outright attempt at anarchy. Do you agree with Janine? Black professor just said his children can't be friends with white people because of Trump. It is deeply disturbing and sad how the politics of hate instilled by former President Barack Obama have spilled over into the tenure of his successor Donald Trump. Obama encouraged Black Lives Matter and other extremist groups, and it has since snowballed into racial divisiveness that may take decades to cure. Some liberals, unfortunately, have carried on the torch from Obama and took it upon themselves to further this sort of hatred. This was clearly expressed in a recent op-ed in the New York Times where an African-American professor openly questioned whether his children could be friends with white people during Trump's presidency. Wrote Professor Yanka, who teaches at Yeshiva University in New York, in his article titled Can My Children Be Friends with White People? It is impossible to convey the mixture of heartbreak and fear I feel for, my son. Donald Trump's election has made it clear that I will teach my boys the lesson generations old, one that I for the most part nearly escaped. I will teach them to be cautious, I will teach them suspicion, and I will teach them distrust. He went on, much sooner than I thought I would, I will have to discuss with my boys whether they can truly be friends with white people. Real friendship is impossible without the ability to trust others, without knowing that your well-being is important to them. The desire to create, maintain or wield power over others destroys the possibility of friendship. He then mentioned Martin Luther King Jr.'s famous dream of black and white children holding hands and countered it by saying that history has provided little reason for people of color to trust white people in this way. Yanka said he will teach my boys to have profound doubts that friendship with white people is possible at all. Do you think Yeshiva University should fire this racist? Breaking one of Roy Moore's accusers was caught working for Hillary. The liberal media has been making sexual misconduct allegations against Republican Senate candidate Roy Moore for people he supposedly dated more than 30 years ago, and the timing is a little bit suspicious. The media is claiming that the allegations are not politically motivated, with the aim of Democrat Doug Jones scoring an upset in the Alabama special election. However, some deeply suspicious information came out when it was revealed that one of Moore's accusers formerly worked for Democrat Hillary Clinton. Deborah Wesson Gibson claims that Moore went for her when she was still in high school. It seems more than coincidental that Gibson owns a company called Signs for Excellence that Hillary Clinton's campaign hired for her failed 2016 campaign. 
Gibson and her firm provides sign language interpretation services for politicians and corporate clients, and has offices in both Florida and Alabama. Clinton was evidently no mere client, as Gibson gushed about the candidate during a radio interview with Florida's WLRN last year. Said the more accuser, one of the things that she, Hillary Clinton, does, is that she'll say, you know what? If standing up for equal pay is playing the woman's card, then deal me in. She went on, and you might normally interpret that say something like, include me. But because that's one of the things that she says, we literally sign, deal me in, like it was cards that you were dealing. We want to capture and hold that euphemism and let the deaf person have access to that as well. So they can be party of the frenzy. Do you think it's highly suspicious that this Roy Moore accuser worked for Hillary? Breaking another man just mysteriously vanished after announcing he has dirt on Hillary. More and more disturbing details have been coming out how former Democratic presidential candidate Hillary Clinton truly stopped at nothing in her quest to become President of the United States. Thankfully, the American voters had final say because we are a democracy, and rejected all of Clinton's underhanded schemes. On the heels of ex DNC interim chair Donna Brazile's revelations about how Hillary rigged the Democratic primaries against popular Bernie Sanders, comes another, more frightening story about an action Hillary and her associates may have taken to try to save her skin. According to a report, a well known professor from Malta named Joseph Mifsud has gone missing, conspicuously when missing after announcing that he had dirt on the failed Democratic presidential nominee. Stated CNN, Joseph Mifsud, the Maltese academic suspected of being a link between the Trump campaign and Russian officials, was once a regular on the foreign policy circuit, attending conferences the world over. It went on, now, after being identified as a key figure in the U.S. Special Counsel investigation into Russian influence over the 2016 U.S. presidential election, Mifsud has gone to ground. Mifsud disappeared last week failing to show up for the classes he teaches at a university in Rome. One of Mifsud's colleagues stated that Joseph had declared that Russia had compromising material on Hillary. What do you think happened to this man? President Trump just put China on notice, I am always going to put America first. The stakes were certainly high for President Donald Trump for his ambitious trip to Asia. After all, he had to deal with the mounting threat that China poses to America's geopolitical superiority. Beyond this, of course, is the pressing issue of North Korea's nuclear program, which has some support from China. Thankfully, President Trump did not disappoint, delivering a powerful address that made China and others in Asia know exactly where he stands and what he intends to do for the American people. During the Asia-Pacific Economic Cooperation Summit in Vietnam, Trump declared, We are not going to let the United States be taken advantage of anymore. He added, While we lowered or ended tariffs, reduced trade barriers, other countries did not open their markets to us. The current trade balance is not acceptable. Trump went on, I am always going to put America first, the same way that I expect all of you in this room to put your countries first. Jobs, factories, and industries were stripped out of the United States and out of many countries in addition. And many opportunities for mutually beneficial investments were lost because people could not trust the system. Pending a finger at China, the president said, we can no longer tolerate these chronic trade abuses. And we will not tolerate them. He also slammed Obama, saying, I wish previous administrations in my country saw what was happening and did something about it. They did not, but I will. From this day forward, we will compete on a fair and equal basis. We are not going to let the United States be taken advantage of anymore. Are you glad Trump said this? Sally Khan tries to shame Roy Moore, has meltdown on live TV when guest brings up Bill Clinton. Democrats and establishment Republicans did not succeed in getting moderate Republican Luther Strange to defeat Faith First Sox solid conservative Roy Moore in the Alabama Senate special election primary. Now they have decided to move to the nuclear option, 
that of trying to create a sex scandal about Roy Moore to defame him and weaken his candidacy. However, liberal CNN reporter Sally Cohn's arguments against Moore fell flat during a recent broadcast when a conservative brought up the shameful exploits of left-wingers hero Bill Clinton. During CNN Newsroom with Brooke Baldwin, Cohn tried to extend the attack campaign against Moore to President Donald Trump saying that the Republican Party already shot itself in the foot by not distancing themselves from Donald Trump when 11 women made similar, adult women at least made allegations against him and he himself bragged about sexually assaulting women. That's when former Trump campaign adviser Jack Kingston dropped the bomb on Sally and made her look like a giant hypocrite, stating, Sally, I wasn't going to bring up William Jefferson Clinton, but I never heard. She interrupted him, saying, Oh. I had a feeling you were. He went on, well no, I wasn't going to go there. I was actually going to stay with Harvey Weinstein and Bill Cosby, but since you brought it up, where were the Democrats denouncing him? That's when Sally started to melt down, saying, Jack, the difference between Bill Clinton and Donald Trump is Bill Clinton was impeached. So we aired that one as a public. And also, he's not currently the president. Jack's hot back he was impeached for perjury. Rambled a stammering Sally, listen this is fine. I'm fine watching this Roy Moore thing go down. Because with condolences to the poor statesman of course, the women who he has abused and made suffer we are watching the destruction of the Republican Party before our very eyes. They are doing themselves systemic damage for generations. And I'm going to be honest, I'm here for it. Are you glad he shut down this liberal hypocrite? Clooney rips stem 2020 candidates, there's nobody that lights up the room, do you agree? Out of all the knee-jerk liberals in the entertainment industry in Los Angeles, actor and director George Clooney just might be the single most obnoxious one, tied perhaps with Miley Cyrus. You wowed will naturally assume, then, that Clooney would be cheerleading the Democratic Party's efforts to find a candidate to challenge Republican President Trump within 2020. It came as a surprise, then, that Clooney recently poured some very cold water on potential Democratic contenders and confessed that none of them lights up a room in the same way charismatic Donald Trump does. Stated Clooney in an interview with Britain's The Sunday Times, Trump, for all his terrible instincts, is very charismatic. A TV star. He went on to claim, people didn't vote for him because he accomplished anything. They knew him. And they were, like, He's exciting. He says outlandish stuff. That's fun. He's got a star on Hollywood Boulevard. He then described his frustrations with Democratic politicians, saying, I sat with a Democratic committee and said, you guys keep coming to us for money, but you don't come to us for the one thing we know how to do, which is make a poster that steals opening weekend. But we don't have a good Democratic candidate yet. We don't have anybody who lights up a room. Clooney added that, like Trump, you need someone who can light up the room. You need what Barack Obama had, he showed up and you went, that guy speaks to my voice. George further slammed Democrats by saying, Democrats in general are very passive. In debates, the Republican will go, that guy's bad, and that guy's good. And the Democrat will say, well, I understand what you're saying, because your parents were alcoholics, and the reality is that you need people who go, that's good. That's bad. Are you surprised Clooney was willing to be so honest about Democrats' weakness compared to Trump?